Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish and today I have brought another original challenge and it's a very interesting topic. Very often students are confused about Coriolis forces uh, in rotating frame and centrifugal forces. So uh, yeah, I'm sure this uh, challenge will uh, go a long way in helping you understand these things in a better manner. Uh, definitely you'll get a deeper insight into it. So without much ado, let me straight away get into the challenge. Okay, let's see. So here's the challenge, centrifugal impulse on turntable. So axis X and Y are fixed in ground frame while small x and small y are fixed on a smooth turntable of radius capital R. So uh, this is a turntable, okay? And the radius of this is capital R. And small x and small y, these green axis, they are rotating with the turntable. So because they are fixed in the frame of the turntable, right? So this is small x and small y is the rotating frame, whereas capital X and capital Y, these are the, uh, uh, these are fixed with respect to ground, okay? And this green axis, they'll be rotating, okay? So X and Y are fixed in ground frame, while small x, small y are fixed on a smooth turntable of radius capital R, rotating with a constant angular velocity omega k cap. So angular velocity vector is coming out of the page, okay? Now a bead of mass small m is projected from origin along its surface with velocity ui cap. So we have a small bead and we project it with some speed ui cap, okay? So it's projected with some speed ui cap like this. So now motion of the bead of course from the ground frame if you see it will go straight because there's no friction or anything. But since the frame itself is rotating, so therefore because of rotation of the frame this bead will tend to go behind because this particle is going forward along with the turntable this the turntable particles are moving forward that's why this bead is going to go backward in the frame uh, fixed with respect to the turntable right mm -hmm. okay so what do we have to find out calculate the impulse vector of the uh, centrifugal force in the xy frame on this bead until it reaches the periphery okay so finally it is going to reach the periphery uh, somewhere here with respect to rotating frame if you see because it's rotating like this and we have to find the uh, impulse of the centrifugal force okay so if you want you can give it a try and uh, i'll get into my analysis right away i'll also be showing an animation so that you can visualize these things in a better manner so let me straight away get into the animation it's a geogebra demonstration so let me show you the demonstration so imagine this is the turntable okay <clears throat> This is the turntable and the red color uh, thing is R bead. So we'll see the motion of this bead from the ground frame as well as we'll see this motion from the turntable frame. So for example, suppose I move the time forward. So suppose I move the time forward, you can see the blue bead. This is the blue color is representing the motion of the bead in the ground frame, right? And the turntable is passing below the bead, right? So I hope you are able to understand what's exactly is happening, right? So blue bead is moving straight with respect to ground, but because the turntable is rotating, therefore, with respect to turntable, it will appear to be going backward, right? So let me also show you the motion with respect to the uh, turntable frame. See, so the red color uh, uh, particle, you can see, this is what will happen with respect to the turntable. Because the turntable is rotating, therefore, the bead will appear to rotate in the frame of turntable. So this is how the motion will look like from the turntable frame. Now, uh, just to give you a better picture, I, I'll show both the beads. So remember blue color bead represents the motion in the ground frame and red color represents the motion as seen from the turntable frame. So whatever direction turntable is rotating, the bead appears to be going in the uh, opposite direction, right? So let us let me just play the animation. See, this is what is happening, right? So I hope you are able to understand. So turntable is going uh, anti-clockwise, therefore, uh, the so, uh, yes, uh, turntable is going anti-clockwise, therefore the bead appears to be going clockwise with respect to the turntable. So I hope you are able to understand this animation and uh, with this uh, we uh, with this animation things should be very clear and now i'll uh, get into the uh, explanation of the problem uh, so how we can go about doing it okay so let me uh, go back to the explanation okay so let's see how to do it okay <clears throat> so let's recall the concepts so in the rotating frame coriolis force is given by minus 2m omega cross v rot now, what is V rot? V rot represents the velocity as seen from the rotating frame. Please remember, this is very important. Students remain often confused about what is V rot in Coriolis force. It's always the velocity as seen from the rotating frame, right? And the centrifugal force is m omega square r r cap. Okay. So, what will be our strategy for doing this problem? See, omega vector is constant. 
so we can readily find the impulse of coriolis force how see impulse is nothing but integration of the force so j coriolis is integral of f coriolis dt and since minus 2 omega is constant so i can take it outside and cross v root and what is the integration of uh, velocity vector it's the displacement vector right so it simply becomes minus 2 m omega cross displacement in the rotating frame so if somehow i can find out the displacement in the rotating frame i'll be able to find the uh, impulse of the coriolis force now uh, i also know that total change in momentum will be the summation of impulses due to coriolis force as well as the centrifugal forces right so i can uh, use the impulse momentum theorem to calculate the impulse of the centrifugal force which is asked in this problem right so i can say that j coriolis plus j centrifugal should be equal to delta p in the rotating frame right where delta p is the change in momentum using the impulse momentum theorem now uh, therefore just rearranging this equation we get j centrifugal is nothing but delta p from the rotating frame and minus the j of the coriolis force so all we need to do is just find the s in the rotating frame for calculating j coriolis and we need to find out the change in momentum in the uh, this rotating frame okay <clears throat> and for this i'll also need to find out the displacement in the rotating frame it turns out it's uh, fairly easy to find out the displacement in the rotating frame okay so let's see how we can go about doing it <clears throat> now from the ground frame we can readily see that velocity vector is constant so ground frame the part b is going straight like this right and time to reach the periphery will be what simply r is the distance and u is the speed so time is simply r by u during this time the initial radius vector along the velocity has turned through an angle theta given by theta is equal to omega t so now see this uh, the uh, green x axis this has rotated through some angle that will be equal to omega into t okay and because of that the bead would have gone back by the same angle by some theta okay so that's what i mean by this so during this time the initial radius vector along the velocity has turned through an angle theta given by theta is equal to omega capital t and t i have already found out so this becomes omega r by u also the tangential velocity of the particle uh, tangential velocity of the particle of the turntable below the bead is given by v tangential is equal to omega see turntable is rotating all the time so the particle below the bead so bead is going uh, with some speed u outward but the turntable particle is going with omega r in this direction so from the turntable frame there is a u in this direction as well as there is some tangential velocity right from the turntable frame at that instant when it has already reached the periphery so it has turned through some angle and there is some speed of the turntable so related to turntable there is an additional thing that should be added to it right <coughs> so also the tangential velocity vector of the particle turntable of the turntable particle below the bead is given by v tangential is equal to omega r let us visualize this information from the rotating frame so what does it look like from rotating frame so from the rotating frame some angle theta has gone uh, the particle has turned through some angle theta with respect to the center this line has turned to theta and there is u in this direction because the turntable has rotated but I've, instead of rotating the turntable from turntable frame turntable is not rotating the the radius vector of the bead is rotating so i have rotated the radius vector by that angle theta and v tangential appears to be in the bead omega ry because turntable particle is going in the other direction so from related to turntable this is a backward velocity to be added right <coughs> so from the rotating frame what is the velocity so it is nothing but resultant of this u vector and this omega r vector and now i can uh, easily break this u into cos theta sin theta and this also into cos theta sin theta i and j components so that's what i've done so v rot is the resultant of u vector and v tangential vector as shown in the figure so this is just a resolution and writing this vector and this vector in i cap and j cap so simple maths i've done and simplified so this is what i get for v rot so once I know uh, V rot, okay, I can easily write the momentum in the uh, rotating frame. So final momentum is simply m times V rot and initial momentum was U i cap. Even from the rotating frame, you see, the initial momentum was U i cap and the final momentum is uh, uh, m times V rot, okay. So I found the delta P in the rotating frame. Now, I can simply find Coriolis uh, impulse uh, just using equation 1 and equation 8. So what was the equation 8? see this is the equation 8 equation 8 is the displacement vector okay so displacement vector we can see this is r so this is r cos theta i cap and r sin theta j cap minus sin okay <coughs> and once i know the s vector you see uh, s vector was required for finding the impulse of the 
Coriolis force, right? So minus two omega cross S vector, and Coriolis impulse can be uh, put in on the right hand side to to find out the centrifuge. So that's what I have done. Everything is ready. I just need to substitute the things, and after substituting, what do I get? This is what I get for the uh, impulse of the centrifugal force, right? So this is our final answer. So let me just, as is customary for me, <laughs> let me just uh, change its color to green. I forgot to make it green. So style it to green. Okay. So this is our final answer. Now another interesting part could be to find the work done by the centrifugal forces. That's also an interesting problem. But let me tell you, uh, many of you will be able to uh, do that one very easily. Why? Because work done by centrifugal forces will be what? Uh, centrifuge see uh, the Coriolis forces do not don't do any work. Why don't the Coriolis force do any work? Why? Because Coriolis force is minus two m omega cross v root. So this force is always per perpendicular to the velocity. And if a force is always perpendicular to velocity, it cannot do any work, right? Power developed is zero. So whatever is the change in kinetic energy from the rotating frame, that must be the the uh, this thing uh, work done by the centrifugal force alone, right? So that could also be asked. And other uh, good questions could be finding the angular impulse of the Coriolis force or finding the, of course, centrifugal force will not have any angular impulse, but we can also ask for, uh, I mean, some more questions we can ask related to this. So that's my analysis for this problem. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up and uh, please uh, share this video as much as possible through WhatsApp, Telegram or whatever media you use for uh, networking with your fellow students. <clears throat> preparing for JE or Olympiads and <coughs> sorry and uh, uh, yes most importantly if you're not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel because that's what keeps me motivated to do a new video every day and uh, thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one and as always God bless you all thank you very much